It is not uncommon for air leaks to develop as the newborn's lungs fill with air. This risk increases if positive pressure ventilation is required, particularly in the presence of meconium or a lung malformation, such as congenital diaphragmatic hernia. Air that leaks from inside the lung and collects in the pleural space is called a pneumothorax. If the pneumothorax becomes large enough, the trapped air can prevent the lung from expanding and can block blood flow to the lung, resulting in severe respiratory distress, cyanosis, and bradycardia. This is called a tension pneumothorax. Small pneumothoraces are common, and those that cause few or no symptoms require no specific therapy. However, a tension pneumothorax is a life-threatening medical emergency. When a newborn does not respond to the usual steps of resuscitation or has improved with respiratory support, then rapidly deteriorates, first suspect a problem with the airway. If the newborn is intubated, make sure the tube is in the trachea and secured at the correct depth. Diminished breath sounds on the left may be due to the endotracheal tube being in too far, down the right main stem bronchus. A large pneumothorax may impair gas exchange enough to prevent the intidal CO2 detector from changing color, even though the tube is in the trachea. Next, suspect a pneumothorax. Signs of significant pneumothorax include worsening or persistent respiratory distress, asymmetric breath sounds that do not improve when the endotracheal tube is repositioned to the correct depth, cyanosis and low oxygen saturation that does not respond to oxygen administration, bradycardia, hypotension, and poor perfusion. Breath sounds will be diminished on the side of the pneumothorax and the heart tones may be shifted towards the opposite side. Because a pneumothorax results in the loss of negative intrapleural pressure, the chest wall of the affected side expands. Chest asymmetry may be noted by sighting along the chest from the feet towards the chin. Transillumination of the chest may be helpful. If there is a pneumothorax, the affected side of the chest will diffusely glow when the light is applied. If the newborn's condition is deteriorating and you suspect a tension pneumothorax, Quickly proceed with treatment even if you are not absolutely certain that a pneumothorax is present. Do not delay treatment while awaiting chest tube placement. The equipment that you will need for emergent aspiration includes a stethoscope, butterfly needle or percutaneous catheter, three-way stopcock, 20 to 60 milliliter syringe, betadine swab or alcohol, gauze, and gloves. There are two commonly used locations for emergent needle aspiration. We will describe both the anterior axillary approach and the midclavicular approach. First, we'll demonstrate the anterior axillary approach using a percutaneous catheter. Your assistant should turn the newborn partially on her side with the pneumothorax side superior to allow the air to rise. You may place a rolled towel under the newborn's shoulder and extend her arm over her head. The fourth intercostal space is located at the level of the nipples. Follow this intercostal space to a point where it meets an imaginary line drawn down the front of the armpit. This is called the anterior axillary line. Using betadine, clean a broad circle from the nipple to the side of the chest on the affected side. Using an 18 or 20 gauge IV catheter, Insert the needle perpendicular to the chest over the top of the rib in the fourth intercostal space at the interior axillary line. Be sure to guide the needle over the top of the rib to avoid the nerve and vessels that run along the bottom of the rib. Advance the IV catheter until you feel it enter the pleural space or hear a rush of air. Once the needle enters the pleural space, remove the needle from the catheter and have your assistant attach a three-way stopcock with a 20 to 60 milliliter syringe. The assistant will open the stopcock to the chest and slowly aspirate the air. If the syringe becomes full, your assistant can close the stopcock to the chest while the syringe is emptied. Then reopen the stopcock to the chest and continue aspiration until the newborn's condition improves. Once all the air is removed, you may withdraw the catheter and cover the insertion site with a bandage. However, a dressing is not mandatory. If a butterfly needle is used, it may be directly connected to the stopcock and syringe before puncturing the chest wall. 
There is a small possibility of puncturing the lung, but this is not a major problem as long as the air is continuously removed. Again, identify the fourth intercostal space in the anterior axillary line. Clean the chest wall with betadine. Hold the needle perpendicular to the chest and insert the needle over the rib. Once the needle is inserted into the skin, your assistant can open the stopcock to the newborn's chest and simultaneously aspirate while you advance the needle into the pleural space. Once air is returned, hold the needle in place while your assistant removes the air. Continue to aspirate until all air is removed. Withdraw the needle and place a small transparent bandage over the site if necessary. Now we'll demonstrate the midclavicular approach. Either a percutaneous catheter or a butterfly needle can be used. Assemble your equipment as previously described. Place the newborn supine. Identify the space between the second intercostal space in a line extending down from the middle of the clavicle. Helpful landmarks include the angle of Lewis and the nipple. Place your finger on the sternal notch and move down the sternum a short distance until you feel a prominent ridge. This is called the angle of Lewis and marks the attachment of the second rib. Move one rib down to the third rib. Follow the third rib across the chest to a point below the middle of the clavicle. Feel the space above the third rib. It is called the second intercostal space. You will place your catheter in this space just over the top of the third rib. You can also find the correct space by starting at the nipple, the fourth intercostal space, and moving two intercostal spaces upward. Clean a broad circle on the front of the chest, extending from the nipple to the clavicle on the affected side. Just as before, hold the catheter perpendicular to the chest and advance the needle over the top of the rib into the pleural space. Guide the needle over the top of the rib to avoid the nerve and vessels that run along the bottom of the rib. Advance the catheter until you feel it enter the pleural space or hear a rush of air. Once the needle enters the pleural space, Remove the needle from the catheter and you have your assistant attach a three-way stopcock with a 20 to 60 milliliter syringe. Your assistant will open the stopcock to the chest and slowly aspirate the air as before. Using the same technique described earlier, a butterfly needle with a stopcock and syringe assembly could also be used. Once the pneumothorax has been drained, carefully monitor the newborn's condition. The air may reaccumulate and require frequent aspiration. The catheter may be left in for frequent aspiration until the chest tube is placed. A chest x-ray should be obtained as soon as possible to ensure that the leak is not reaccumulating. Contact a neonatologist for assistance if a pneumothorax persists.